How's it going everyone? Sephir here and welcome back to another Tower of Fantasy video. Today is going to be day 40 in the Ultimate Guide series and we have a lot of important and critical information that is going to help you accomplish a lot of things for the weekly tasks that will be resetting very soon. So make sure to tune in for that and we also have some very crazy updates concerning the Artificial Island home base. So let's go ahead and jump right into all of that stuff. So starting with the island first, the mobs have respawned, yep, they've just respawned. We're now now thinking that maybe it is a 72 hour respawn on the regular monsters it seems like the boss monsters have not respawned so just be aware that there are some additional monsters that you can kill and collect and we will probably be looking into the future to keep tracking these timers as the global version is vastly different from the Chinese version and we have a lot of surprises in terms of accelerated growth as they were approaching Vera and 2.0 very rapidly so just keep that in mind that things may be just a lot different and we won't know until they happen. So this is going to be the important critical update. The island mobs are back. So go ahead and get those resources. I'll pop this image up on the screen. You should have roughly about this much. And if you did or did not do the cluster quest with Colador, then you should have plus or minus 400 on the metal material section. So you're aiming roughly about this if you started as soon as the servers came up. Uh, if you're a little bit below that, don't worry, especially if you, like, didn't get your island ro rotating till like, later on in the day. So just keep that in mind. We're probably having about this amount of materials, and that will lead into the question, can we buy some of the weekly reset stuff before it resets? And I think at this point, it is possible you could consider some high-value targets, like the SR Relic Shards and some other things, but maybe err on the side of caution here and wait and see what kind of upgrades we're working with next week again a lot of these things are stuff you're going to get down the line so uh, it's going to be your choice if you want to make the call and pull the trigger spend a little bit or if you just want to hold for upgrades it's totally up to you okay moving into the next topic right behind me these transmission gates these things are appearing all over Artificial Island. This is kind of a new thing. It's even newish on CN. So we're trying to figure out how they exactly work. But for now, we're just guessing that they don't respawn. But there's a slim possibility that they could reset on some sort of a timer. So just in case, I would go ahead and clear these out and see what happens. You know, prepare for the worst. <laughs> and just, uh, you know... See be safe be safe with these things so for me i'm gonna go ahead and head around today and clear out these gates i'll also be doing it on stream with the viewers so if you want to check out that twitch stream at 5 30 p.m est should be down in the comments below go ahead and check that one out we'll be doing that as well as some carries for frontier and raids so if you're on solaris stop by or if you just want to see some high level gameplay i'm also going to be pushing my bygone phantasm rank which is going to be very important so next let's go ahead and talk about the special events going on there are a few special events going on at the moment and you're going to want to go ahead and take care of those the supply run is just a simple login and click you're going to gather some materials and then the Ida Cafe will have three customers resetting every day at 1 p.m. EST well well server time whenever your server is and you're going to be working towards points here you get about 40 to 45 points per customer if you have collected all of the correct food items and I do want to say that these food items can be a little tedious to make. However, the world bosses in the open world, including the interdimensional frost dragon, I believe, will be dropping stuff from their treasure chest and their person as well. So they drop materials and they also drop full meals from their treasure chest. So if you got a guild or a crew or you want to stop by our stream and kill the bosses with us, you'll be able to collect like three to four of the whole cooked meals and it makes it a lot easier to complete this event. So make sure to check that one out just a little pro tip for you guys on that one and then we have the level 65 cap is now available you should be level 65 on today don't worry about xp it did not go up very much so we don't have to worry about that now the part we have to worry about is the weapon materials weapon materials are definitely very expensive and as you can see here we got all of our weapons to 130 at this point 
The next upgrade is going to require 15 of every tier 2 material, so you might want to go ahead and get started on that. I know level 70 is pretty far away. However, just be prepared because there are probably other weapons that you're going to need to upgrade. I know I have a few. I need to upgrade my frig and a couple of others up to 130, so I'm going to be pushing materials quite a lot, but make sure you get your main 3 set. I believe it was 11 per, plus you will be able to upgrade your matrices all to level 65, so make sure you go ahead and focus on that and you're as strong as you possibly can be because we have a lot of weekly reset to stuff to talk about but before we get into the weekly reset stuff i wanted to invite any dps spreadsheet users any theory crafters to my discord link will be in the description down below i'm gonna start compiling tests because i see a lot of people testing data numbers they're testing frame data they're testing dps data and i've been doing a lot myself and i'm a firm believer in math and numbers but i also know that when it comes to video games functional generally beats theoretical right so we're going to talk about the best comps and discuss that debate that with you know excel sheets and try to figure out who does the actual best dps in the game not just against a standalone dummy that sits there and lets you attack him in the back 24 7 but also against bosses that are relevant to the end game and how you can actually perform that dps so if you're somebody who's interested in that come join us come join us we're going to be talking about that i'm going to open up a separate channel in the discord and we're going to compile some information so that we can all perform through the best of our capabilities with that out of the way, let's talk about weekly resets now. The most important one that's coming up is going to be the Bygone Phantasm. Bygone Phantasm will be ranked based off of your Bygone Phantasm rank, but also your Sequential Phantasm rank, which is sort of like a challenge mode. So make sure that you have a comfortable amount of points in all three of these categories so that you can increase your rank as high as you can. And keep in mind that the rank rewards are going to be high stakes because you will be getting a lot of gold dust as well as these advancement modules which are very very crucial so make sure you're pushing the leaderboard as high as you can i feel like i'm gonna get second or third this week depending on how many people in my bracket are this strong i know this guy is up here at 330 we'll see how much we can push i think i could push a good bit uh so we'll give it a run tonight and of course i'll do that all all of that on the twitch stream should be fun uh so we'll check that one out but that's just a friendly reminder to everyone make sure you're getting this week's rewards for your bygone sequential and getting prepped up for the rewards for the ladder reset um, so hopefully you get some new brackets next week and you're able to get a solid placement for currency once you have that out of the way the other thing that will be resetting will be the raid the raid we only have one right now the mid-level control room at level 60 but this will be resetting and you do not want to miss this because it's 1200 gold dust that's a whole gold ssr item of your choice so make sure that you're going ahead and capitalizing on that we also do raid carries a lot uh, but make sure you're focusing and finding a team and a group and then you should be okay because this will be resetting on monday so we're going to get a new set of this and i'm looking forward to this level 66 one it won't be for a while but next week we should be getting it so i'm excited to see a new boss encounter definitely looking forward on that after that we have the wormhole which will be resetting in 17 hours so make sure you go ahead and clear ursa major on the endless mode at least one time so that you can get your dust 30 dust per floor that you clear times eight so about 240 in total it's a nice bonus in addition to the cycle rewards which should be handed out tomorrow so that is definitely really exciting and fun on top of that there are a few other things you do not want to miss out for the week check out your crew make sure you have done all of your crew missions as well as donated for your daily because the rewards will be coming in the rewards section here on monday so make sure to check that one out and hopefully you get lucky and get a lot of dark crystals because that's definitely what we all need with all of these characters like Lin and Ruby and Saki coming into the future and Cobalt and all this stuff and oh it's going to be crazy so we definitely need all of the crystals that we can get our hands on. After the crew, go ahead and check out the commissary store. Make sure you have at least bought your advancement modules and your booster frame modules for the week. That is going to be very important. Once you have done that, the only other thing you could do is maybe check out the crew store. If it has relic shards, SSR for some relic that you want or are desiring to push in, you could consider spending your currency there or else you could just save up for next week. It will be refreshing. And then the support point store. Make sure you have bought everything that you want to buy for the week. There 
there is the joint supply chips and the black nucleus which is very important. You could also consider the gold and some machine parts if you really wish, but it's not too big of a struggle on those things. And then that's going to be it for the commissary section. Once we have the commissary section, we do have the island, so make sure you have killed your world bosses on the island. I feel like you probably have, but I'll just say it. Make sure you've killed your world bosses on the island. You've purchased whatever material weekly that you want to purchase, if that's the route you choose to go. If you want to go the saving route, that's also okay. Both strats are viable because we don't know what the future is going to hold, so make sure you choose between those. But just make sure everything is wrapped up for your island, and you're checking that 24-hour material button bucket timer you can only collect materials for 24 hours total so after that it's going to be burnt and wasted so make sure you head to your island hit that redeem all craft button up in the top right corner and then go ahead and check that one out it's very simple you just hit escape you go to build and then you hit this claim button here so once you've claimed that you should be all right and then you will get all of your resources and that way you're not wasting anything in the future and then finally i wanted to have a small commentary about frontier clash Frontier Clash is still difficult, but still possible. I know there was Crow nerfs, and some people were like, Oh no, Crow's nerfed, and now what am I going to do? Crow is still the best damage in Frontier Clash. Like, you have to use his auto attack string, which still does really high damage. Uh, but if you play him correctly, he is still the best. Uh, one of the guys that we run with does did crow before the patch he did most damage he still does crow now he still does the most damage uh he's definitely doing insane dps so um as far as frontier clash is concerned everything should be about the same just make sure you're getting your teams together and i will say the final tips for that is make sure everyone in your group is from the same crew because you get a massive crew bonus for having people from the same crew there and then just make sure that you are using correct weapons like support weapons are actually kind of good here if you have one supporter we tested runs where we had one support and three whales and it turned out we were doing like more damage in the end because somebody had a three star code and was buffing our damage right so this is kind of crazy to think about but as the game progresses we're going to get more into team play objectives and when you talk about team play you're talking about your team's total damage output not just one individual who's scoring high numbers buffing has its place supporting has its place tanking has its place and especially as we get into the harder raid content you're going to see this come more and more true so just keep in mind that doing dps is not everything Okay, that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed this video or you found it useful in any way, shape, or form, make sure to consider liking, subscribing, and hitting the bell if you feel that I earned that. And thank you for watching as always. We will see you in the next video.